Good evening, everyone. Uh, we've got someone a little different on today from uh, Shaman Legends. I'm joined by Danny Forrest. Danny was with the club from 2005 to 2008. So thank you for coming on and let's get straight on with it. So could you just tell us a little bit about when you first started football? Where, where have you come from? Yeah, so I'm from a, a village, uh, Burley and Wharfdale. Um, very proud of those roots. I started kicking a ball about from being a toddler, really, with my dad and brothers. And it just sort of spiralled from there. Played for the local team, Burley Juniors, and picked up by Bradford City at nine years old and then um, stayed there for a lot of years. And then, obviously, um, played a lot of non-league football a little bit later on. So, yeah, um, it's just, I suppose, it's in my blood. Mm -hmm. New age. Uh, when you were younger, were there anyone that like uh, who was your favourite player back when you were a child? Yeah, so growing up in the nineties, I yeah. think it was. I used to really like Alan Shearer, mm -hmm. um, Michael Owen, and yeah. people like that were who I used to look up to really. And then uh, being a Bradford City fan, I uh, really used to like a player called Robbie Blake. Mm -hmm. um, who I used to really enjoy watching. So it, it were those types of players, really, you know, goal scorers, I suppose. And um, I never really turned into a, a natural goal scorer, if I'm honest, but they were the ones when I were a kid, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if we go a bit further on now to, like, your Bradford City as a youth player, what was it like playing at Bradford City uh, in the youth system? Yeah, for myself, being a from the area and a Bradford City fan at the time um, it was brilliant um, the club was in the Premier League and the Championship while I were there mainly um, and being able to train and, and work with some of these players that had sort of stuck yeah. around on long contracts the, the lads who had played in the Premier League it was a great experience and uh, managed to break in and play a few games and uh, but just yeah I have got fond memories yeah. of that period yeah so um Decent. What were your goal? Were you hoping to try play for Bradford City in the Premier League? Was that something that you wanted to do? Yeah, I suppose so. I think I probably all I ever wanted to do was play for Bradford City when I was a, a young lad. So I managed to achieve that, um, and I, I'm proud of the fact. That, you know, I, I wish I'd have stayed at been able to stay at Bradford yeah. City and at a higher level for longer. But you know. Mm -hmm. these things sometimes they just don't happen for you for whatever reason and but yeah I mean to have made a career a bit higher up would have been great but mm -hmm. you know these, these things happen well. I think you did pretty well for yourself at Halifax and the other clubs you've played for us. so I wouldn't oh, uh, you. You with that um, so we moved on to, obviously you came on loan to Halifax but then you signed for us later on uh, yeah. what like made you decide to actually sign for us obviously you've said it were more Bradford letting you go but what was it like signing for Halifax? Was it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I mean, I had a year left on my contract at Bradford City. I came on loan pretty much. I think it was the end of August 2005, roughly something like that. For the and the agreement was the full season, and there was just something about uh, the club really. Um, I knew Wayne Jacobs, the assistant manager, well from my time at Bradford. Um, obviously, Chris Wilder were there, and yeah. I just felt valued from day one by the whole club, um, the staff. The players, um, similar. We had a, a good group of young players who had sort of had a similar pathway to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewis Colleen, Adam Quinn, Greg Young. They'd come out of professional clubs, mm -hmm. and we had a strong bond. But um, I think, through, like I said, throughout the club, the board, all the other, you know, staff, mm -hmm. um, club staff that we didn't see day to day, but we remember saw on match days, and then obviously seemed to have a decent rapport with their supporters from, you know, very early on. And I, I just felt at home. I, like I said, I felt felt valued. And that was huge for me because I'd probably not really had that in the previous few years at Bradford and having someone put complete faith in me. And um, that was, as a young lad, that was, that was massive and um, really sort of helped me. I don't know, I just grew a, an affiliation and a bond with the whole club, which I still kind of hold to this day. Um, and I have such fond memories. But yeah, I mean, after getting released by Bradford after having a year on loan at Halifax, it was quite an easy decision just due to the conversations I'd had with Chris and Wayne. And I never really um, looked anywhere else. I didn't really, I could have quite easily just seen what my options were. But 
the offer was good in terms of they really sort of wanted me. They put me on a two-year deal, which they weren't all that common for the club at, at that time. Um, so I, I just felt wanted, and that was more important than anything, really. It was like the only club you sort of knew at the time, wasn't it? So I think, like you said, it was quite confirmed that you're going to go there. Were there any best mates at Halifax for you? Yeah, I think a couple that I've mentioned. Um, Adam Quinn, I still see and keep in touch with to this day. Um, Lewis Killeen, um, Greg Young, you know, we've all been to sort of each other's weddings, had do's, we've all kept in touch. And I think sort of 15, 15 years, you know, on from that period, really, I think it says a lot about what we had in that squad. But, you know, it's, there's a lot of respect between us all, you know, still um, every now and then we'll, share texts with quite a lot of the lads, Martin Foster, John Grant, uh, Matt Doughty, Tyrone Thompson, you know, I think we all sort of hold each other in high regard still. So uh, I think it's it speaks volumes of what we had at that time. How did it feel working under Chris Wilder? But what was it like working under somebody who has made it so far up the football pyramid in terms of management? Did he inspire you to become a management now? Because I've heard that you are a management. Is it Silson? Yeah, it's still done, yeah. Um, I'd say it'd be, I really just enjoyed his style. He um, he was tactical, but he he played effective football. He did his homework. He was very thorough, yeah. very thorough in um, the way he worked on the training ground. And, um, you know, it's easy to say now because he's gone on, yeah. you know, he's having a great career. But you always felt like, I mean, I'd been at Bradford City with sort of four or five managers. Yeah. Um you know, and some some highly reputable managers. But when playing for Halifax, I always felt, I mean, I still say it to this day, he was the best I've had. And, you know, he sort of, like I said, 15 years down the line, he's been at so many clubs and had so much success. But yeah. even back then, you could sort of, you just kind of knew um, that he had there was something special about it. Yeah. Well, he was the only manager at Halifax. And I think, obviously, that creates a good bond when you have a manager who stays for a month or so or even a year, and then goes out the door, you can't really create a relationship with a manager, where if you have something for a couple of seasons, you can start, like I know now, we've got Pete Wilde, if you've heard of him. He was the yeah, of course, yeah. And the players have like created a bond with him, and I think that's because he's stayed quite long in the out, been moving up the football pyramid. But anyway, yeah. It's, oh yeah. Uh, what was your view of losing to Helford in the playoff final? I'm, I'm, am I correct in saying you played in that game? Yeah, Hereford. Um, yeah, just it was a tough one to swallow at the time. We'd had a, an unbelievable season. Yeah. Um, I don't think we were the most fashionable sort of yeah. team and club at the time in that league. I don't think anyone really fancied us, and it, it kind of suited us. Um, you know, just going sort of under the radar a little bit, grinding results out, playing decent, attractive football. Um, we all. We all gave absolutely everything for the club and each other and, and sort of Chris and Wayne sort of um, created that. Um, but yeah, losing in the final was was a tough yeah. one after such a good season and we were sort of 10 minutes away from uh, yeah. you know the Football League, which you know I, I don't have any regrets, but no. <laughs> it was a tough one to swallow at the time and um, yeah. you know coming so close and then it, yeah, it was it was a bit of a pill to swallow for quite a while and um, yeah, but that the whole season was just amazing and probably well yeah definitely my favorite season i've ever had in football um so you know those memories will live long and those relationships i've got from that that period of you know speak volumes like i say it's never good is it to lose in the final but especially in them circumstances it makes it even worse yeah i think so mate yeah i mean Two all full time, and then I think it was second half, and the lads cut inside Matt Green, I think, or something he was called Ryan Green, mm -hmm. and bent one in with his, you know, with his, his um, weak, yeah. supposedly weak of foot. He's probably never do that again in his life, you know. But that's just how it turns out sometimes. But what I can say is we had a right go on the day and all season, and we were so close. And mm -hmm. yeah, shame really, but it, it still stings to this day. Yeah. But, it's hard for me when I think of like when Halifax got relegated a couple of seasons ago and to think of like, imagine the players in them circumstances when you're like, are we actually going to do it? And then that ends up happening. It's not 
it just, you know, it sort of knocked the stuffing out of you in a way. Yeah, I suppose it did a little bit. We did probably didn't look at it like that at the time, but mm -hmm. you, you know, you look at the next season and we didn't quite recover from it. There was some other external factors that came into play a little bit, but um, you know, we all fully expected to be, you know, in a similar sort of position and and getting similar results. And it didn't quite work out like that, but you know, maybe that was off the back of yeah. what happened that day and the culmination of that season. But hey, you know. What can we do? These things happen, and the experience was amazing. You scored fourteen goals for Halifax, but did you? What was your preferred position, playing on the wing or playing up front? Did you see yourself as a creator or more as a finisher? I think probably ended up being a bit more of a creator. I mean, when I when I first signed for the club on loan, I think um, the club at the time had sort of five strikers or five, you know, attacking players. There was. Um, uh, Suggy, Sugden, uh, John Grant, Chris Senior, Craig Midgley, uh, Lewis Killeen. And I think Chris and Wayne really wanted to sign me. And to get me in that team, I'd only ever played as a, a striker, a number nine or a number 10 or whatever you want to call it. And uh, Chris, we, we played like a 4 4 2 at the time. And to get me in the team, I had to play on the right hand side. And I remember in those early days, Chris really working with me in training and um, setting up a lot of shape sessions and really going through what my role was as a wide man. I was completely retraining. Obviously, at the time, I had the attributes, you know, physical attributes and could handle the football, but retraining for that position, it was a challenge. But that's I went on to sort of play most of my football after that throughout my non-league career out wide. So, um, yeah, I'd definitely say I became more of a creator. I'd have loved to have scored more than 14 for Halifax, don't get me wrong, but... Um, yeah, playing out wide, I, I enjoyed it and I got to play alongside some brilliant strikers and other players as well. So, yeah. Seems your breakthrough season at Halifax was the 2006-2007 season. Now, that was actually the season that I was born, so I can't really comment <laughs> on it. But what was your opinion on the on the, on that season? Um, Just, it, well, we're very mixed. We were, well, yeah, probably didn't live up to expectations, really. I remember in the summer, I felt like we'd added to the squad quite well. I remember us signing a player called Shane Smeltz. Um, in training, we all we all thought we'd really sort of got one there. And, and he went on to have a great career, an absolutely fantastic career. Didn't quite work out for him with us, but the early signs were that he would really take us to the next level. Yeah. Um, obviously, Andy Campbell coming in, another... He just suffered unfortunate injuries, but when he did play, he made a massive difference and his whole demeanour around the club was fantastic. But um, just, yeah, I think he snapped his Achilles at one point, which kept him out a long, long time, which was a blow for us. So we had a few things that went against us. Um, but yeah, we probably didn't live up to the expectations, unfortunately. And um, that's, like, that's hard even now because it was really at the time I remember... Chris, Chris trying everything really and trying to put our finger on it and get it right and we'd have little spells where we hit some form but it was never probably sustained you know mm -hmm. longer periods what we needed so yeah it was a tough one really It's never good is it when your main man goes out injured and he's going to be out for a long time and you don't really know what to do it's, it's like you have to go to a plan B and then if your plan B didn't work you have to go to plan C and it doesn't always work but anyway What's your overall opinion on the fans at Halifax? Well, I had a, a great relationship with them from yeah. early on, really. Um, and it's, strangely enough, still keeping touch with a few of them via, you know, messengers and various other bits and pieces. So, yeah, I mean, they were great with me. And yeah. like I said, I always felt supported. I always felt backed. Yeah. I always felt it was inclusive for me personally and... All they ever wanted was somewhere to be home, and they were a massive part of that. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, great. They were great with me, and and they supported us. You know, they'd be vocal at times when things weren't going all right, but fair play to them. They paid the money, and um, you know, it kind of, in a weird way, helped us as players because we didn't want to let anyone down, especially not the fans, because the club means so much to them, and we knew that. Yeah. So yeah, all in, all in all, great. What was the best ever game you played for Halifax, in your opinion? 
Uh, well, the obvious one that sticks out is the semi-final of the playoffs away at Grays. Like even that night, we were going into it with a three-two lead from the first leg, but people still writing us off. People still, you know, not really fancying us at all. So it was nice to go in there. Like although there was pressure from within the group and probably the Halifax Town family and the fans, there was in some ways the one there was no pressure because no one expected us to go through and it was just a, a good battle on the night um the game swung two or three times with how the scoring went and um for me personally i remember missing a chance early on yeah um, but i think i mean i felt like i did okay that night and affected the game positively and, yeah. and um i was happy with my performance yeah but more more happy with that we it just meant so much to everyone to get through to that final after being written off week after week, really. When you eventually left the club, uh, you obviously were on loan, but did you to join? You then later joined Crawley. Was that due mm. to the financial situation? We wonder, or was it just that your time at Halifax had come to a close? No, um, I never ever like many of the lads. We didn't want to leave the club. Um, if I'm being really honest, talking now, like I said. 13, 14 years on it, uh, we were we were due in for talks. Everyone sort of had their time slot on a particular day to go meet the manager and, yeah. and talk about the future, um, whether we were getting offered a new contract or not. And anyway, we got the text on the morning saying, you know, you need to all be in at the same time. And I remember just probably 20 of us, all the players and the staff, just hanging around at the shade, just waiting for news on the financial situation and whether the club would still be in existence. And, you know, sat there that day and there's Angie Firth, who was the secretary at the time, was in and out of meetings and trying to keep us up to date. And yeah. um, I never thought it'd come to, you know, the outcome that it did and that the, the, there'd be no club um, yeah. effectively. And, um, you know, it was heartbreaking and never wanted to leave. Never yeah. wanted to leave and always wish things could be different. But... That's how it was at the time, I suppose. The worst way to leave, isn't it, in that sort of way? And then to think that, obviously, you've got to think about joining a new club and you're like, oh, where can I go? But you did actually join Crawley, which was a pretty good move for you. What's your opinion on your time at Crawley? Um, <laughs> hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. At the time, I was a young lad, you know. I know the possibility of staying at Halifax probably yeah. could have been there in, in its new form at the time. and. But I was 23 years old. I'd been in this full-time game for seven years. I was ambitious. I wanted to I wanted to achieve all my ambitions with Halifax. But I needed to stay in the full-time game. I wanted to stay at the level. I had a few options. Um, York was one of them who were very strong and wanted. But I just remember at that time a bit of rivalry and it just never quite... It didn't sit right for me to... It wouldn't have sat right for me to go there, if I'm honest. Um, Crawley was another one. The thing with Crawley is they were interested in quite a few of us. There was myself, Lewis Killeen, Adam Quinn, Jake Wright, um, even John Shaw ended up down there with us. And yeah. it was, I remember the headline in the Halifax Courier being, yes. I think it was Fletcher who wrote it, saying, Oh, Forest leads Exodus. And it was never like that because we never wanted to leave. But yeah. um, myself, Lewis, and Quinn, he sort of, and Jake Wright had a bit of a chat and we thought we could go down there completely something new life experience we thought we could push each other get the best out of each other quite an exciting sort of you know complete change which for me personally at the time at 23 years old not really sort of leaving the area I lived in playing for two clubs over the course of eight years I think the time came really and um, like I said in hindsight I've no regrets no regrets because the path I've taken has led me to today and um, you know fairly happy uh, with you know, with what I've got now, so no regrets at all. But in hindsight, you look back and was it the right one? Two or three other clubs interested. Who knows? My football career might have ended up different. But well, yeah, it was um, a tough period, really. Um, in the end, well, at least you had your mates to like, well, from Halifax to like join with you. So you want to learn. You had people that you could, you know, have support of. But anyway, what's your pre-match meal? Oh. Um, Pasta and chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it back then. Half 11, 
on a on a Saturday match day before the three o'clock kick off religiously. Yeah. Yeah. We've got one from a fan now. Um, well, he yeah. does this for every single player. All but right. Can you name all the clubs you played for in order? How long we got? <laughs> no, no. Bradford City, um, Halifax Town, Crawley Town, Barrow, yeah. AFC, Geisley, Harrogate Town, Bradford Park Avenue, back to Geisley, then to Gainsborough. I think that's correct, and I think every single player so far has got that correct. So we'll see if we can test the player in the future. But yeah. Anyway, um, small as it, uh, I really appreciate you coming on, um, and. It's great to obviously have you on. So thank you for coming on again and I'll see you um, in the future. See you. Nah, Luke. Keep up the good work. It's great. Well done. Thank you. Bye. See you, mate.